part three, I guess, or whatever. I'm on my way to the BAER, going to have my stomach looked at. We're talking about uh, after I left Camp Shelby, Mississippi, and um, and uh, I got into Kuwait. So after about a month there of being in Kuwait, I was pulling wrenches. We had to do a PT test. I don't know why they wanted us to do a PT test. 100 fucking 30 degree weather. I mean, it was just like Egypt all over again. It's just anal retentive, you know, it's just, unless of course you're a PT stud, you just want to go out there and fucking do your thing. And by the way, um, Iraq is a dry country. No drinking, no drinking, no drugs, nothing. No messing around with the women, nothing. We had the 8th Chemical Company that was attached to us, and they had roughly about 10 females inside their company. And there was a lot of sexual harassment charges going on. A lot of people got in trouble because of these 10 fucking bitches. I was like, damn, dude. I said, you guys should know better. Even looking at them sideways would get you written up. Anyway, so one morning, roughly about a month later, and I'm there inside... Uh, inside the shop and I'm looking up fucking part numbers for to send in somebody comes walking in the E7 that was in charge of us of our uh, our section comes in hey everybody says we're going uh we're sending up an uh wrecker up north to a uh, camp uh, camp cedar who wants to go everybody just stood there and looked and I says hey uh Where's Camp Cedar at? Oh, it's in Iraq. I raised my hand. He says, okay. He says, have you been up there before? I says, I've only been here a month. I'm a, I'm a filler. Oh, okay. And then uh, Sergeant Fishman volunteered. He says, okay. He says, all right, you two guys. He says, all right, go, you two guys. Um, we're gonna get you on the, we're gonna get you on the list to go up there with the, the convoy. And we're going to give you a list of stuff you need to bring back with you because some of the 160th guys, mechanics, are actually stationed in Camp Cedar. That's where I was trying to go. I was trying to go up there, try to fucking rotate or fucking replace somebody that's up there. And, uh, of course, that didn't happen. But I said, fuck yeah. So basically what you had to do is you had to get your ruck set, your body armor, your weapons, ammunition, Bring your, you know, bring your ammo, because everybody got ammo. Bring your ammunition, and they'll put you on the fucking list to, um, with the convoy to go up, to go up north. And I never driven a PLS in my life. That big fucking eight-wheeled motherfucker. You know, never, never drove one, but I was gonna get a chance to drive one. I wasn't gonna be, I wasn't gonna be the first guy to drive up there. I mean, Feisman or Fishman. His name was Fishman. Fishman was going to drive and I was going to TC. So you get your rucksack, get your body armor. And I said, how long will we be up there? He says, oh, about three days. I said, oh, shit. Okay, I'll get three days. So I got my little logbook at home. So on my logbook, what I've been doing ever since we got into Kuwait, and I was writing different things down, what was going on. Different numbers, different... Um, um, you know, you know, stuff for like back home, all this other stuff. And I was like, here I am in Kuwait, just arrived at six, because I was putting times and dates on everything I was doing when I was in, when I was in Camp, Camp Virginia. So I said, oh fuck. I said, okay, this is going to be great. So the following morning, they had us all gather up that was going on the convoy mission. All right, and this, uh, this fucking Hua Hua E7 named Burn, Sergeant Burn. Too bad they didn't put an S at the end of his name for Burns. Would have sounded kind of cooler, but Sergeant, Sergeant First Class Burn. He says, all right, this is what's going on. And uh, you guys are gonna be, uh, you know, going uh, blah, blah, and, uh, and uh, you know, and my men are, are combat veterans and, uh, you know, just stick with us. You know, and I kind of went, I pointed to my patch, you know, and I said, this is not my first rodeo, huh? 
Well, I mean, if you consider Egypt a rodeo, but, you know, it's not like Iraq where you can fucking suck a big fucking IED and get blown to shit. But there was six IEDs that was reported in um, Egypt, and the Canadian contingent rolled over one and blew up on them and wounded both of them. So, and then, of course, I drove the fucking, the fucking white pickup trucks, and they have no armor. So you may never know. We would have got sprayed by by Hajis or, or Siddiqui's or something. So, you know, I, I took all the missions, including the one in in uh, in Egypt. I took it kind of serious, you know. But I pointed to my patch and I said, listen, this is not my first rodeo. And he just kind of looked at me like I was some sort of asshole. So uh, I said, all right. And Feisman had a fucking 101st Airborne patch. He was over in Iraq in 2004. So, you know, so this guy, he was trying to sound all self-important or something. I don't know what his fucking gig was. But the guy was kind of a fucking dick anyway. And a couple of the other guys that was there, they were pretty cool. But, uh, I don't know, I'm either just too much pressure of being a leader or just too much pressure, period. So I have no idea what his fucking trip was. And anyway, so we, uh... So we got the PLS and we filled it up, put our rucksacks in the back. And the PLS itself has a Duke system, a Duke and a Duke box was on it. So when it's running, it sets off this little pulse around it. So if it comes up to an IED by people using, you know, like cell phones at the time, you push the cell phone number, it goes Dee! and then boom. That would help fuck up the, you know, scramble the fucking, uh, scramble the signal. Um, a PLS, unfortunately, is too big for a Rhino. The Rhino thing, it's this steel bar that goes up like this, and it's got this box with a hot plug in it, and you fold it down in front of the Humvee, and you, and, uh, you lock it in place, and you drive, and what happens is it'll trip an IED because of the, the heat pulse that goes off it'll trip the IED without it hitting the vehicle. So there was that. We didn't have a we didn't have a Rhino on a PLS because it's just the fucking truck is just way too fucking big and it wouldn't be able to do anything. You wouldn't be able to have anywhere to mount it. But we do had a Duke on it. So and we were told as we were driving is to look at the Duke and it's got these three little lights going going back and forth like green 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 and if you see a yellow that means there's something kind of fucking weird in the area and if it's a red that means there's a fucking IED somewhere and i've seen those several times but what's kind of funny about it and it says why didn't that shit fucking blow off i was like damn and either that or it or it defeated the um the rhino i mean that the rhino defeated the IED so i don't know yet so I spent a lot of time looking at those lights, going dee 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 dee. I was looking at the road, and we're just, you know, just hot dogging it down there. We leave out of Kuwait, we drive down the MSR right to Kabari, or what we call K crossing, or Kaburi. I don't know how you fucking pronounce it. You go down there, and you're down there with all sorts of other fucking people. There's all sorts of other vehicles that's going to be leaving and going into Iraq. So, goddamn. Wow. Woo -hoo -hoo. She was hot. Damn. 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 Anyway. So. Um, so we get to Kabari Crossing. And we're, you know, and we let the E7 and all those other guys do their thing. They go deal with the people there about getting us, you know, getting us through the gate. And, you know, and each convoy... I think has to have like an hour, I think an hour head start. I don't know, somebody you, some of you guys that did convoy security, um, you might want to leave a comment because it has been a long time for me. And I've been on many convoy missions, but I just can't s simply remember how much, how much interval we needed between convoys. It's been, it's been, a, it's been a while. So, and we left roughly that early evening finally and from Kabari crossing to to Camp Cedar it was like a 
300 and something mile drive. I was like, damn. You know, and I knew that the, and I found out that the Massachusetts National Guard would sometimes would be in their Humvees, four vehicles, would troll up and down that part of the MSR going into Kabari, which was pretty fucking cool. And I also found out that sometimes the 82nd Airborne goes through there. So, we're like, okay, you know, fucking cool hua. And some of these guys were in tents, you know, because, you know, you may not know if you're going to hit an IED. But for me, I wasn't in tents at all. I was kind of relaxed. I was like, damn, this is, this is going to be crazy. You know, I'm finally in the dirt of the country. And, uh, you know, I'm like, fuck. I mean, if we get hit by an IED, man, that shit's going to fucking blow up and fucking do all sorts of crazy shit, you know? It's like, fuck. I was, like, excited. This is, this is just fucking badass. I'm finally in a fucking actual war zone. Hua. Hua. 